Hello and welcome to the 22nd round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at the Decatur Raceway in Decatur, Illinois. With only four races left on the schedule, including this one, we've finally entered the home stretch of the season. Qualifying on the pole is James Hewitt, third in points, with Israel Bruce, his teammate on his outside in a good effort, Cameron Taylor there in row number two, alongside points leader Ike Durbin, second in points, Ben Atkins, alongside Sergey Yakovsky making his second start of the year. He won the pole for the PCC Trucks race and slides a bit wide there going into turn one, which lets Vinny LaBeouf get by. Mason Yokoyama would hold on to the lead, but both Yakovsky and Yokoyama would both go off in the middle point of the race, handing the lead and the win to Vinny LaBeouf in the 333 truck, and that would be his third win on the season so far. Ryan Jeffries on the points lead, as those are the only drivers that are in contention for the PCC Trucks title at this point. In the PCC Europe race at Spa, we had a big incident involving most of the championship competitors on the first turn of the first lap. You can see there Isaac Kovalchuk getting a push by Clara Kindle on her roof. And she's going to go into the wall there and dislodge him. Uh, Johan Sigurdsson and Keegan Mallory would take the lead. But both Sigurdsson and uh, Mallory would have issues handing the lead to Ingrid Jane Ambleton. Clara Kindle was looking to still finish in the points. But uh, with a crippled car, she would not be able to make the finish. And that would hand the lead to Ingrid Jane Ambleton in the 47, driving for Master Sport, which is their first win uh, all season. Christopher Loxon, Jan Schmidt, Clara Kindle, and Isaac Kovalchuk are the only drivers in contention for the title going into the final race of the season. And with that, James Hewitt's going to bring the field down to the green flag. He gets a good start, but Israel Bruce there on the right-hand side, uh, getting a good run down into turn number one, and he's going to take advantage clips the curb there Hewitt goes wide and we've got three wide now four wide for second place with Atkins oh they make contact Atkins and Hewitt Hewitt's gonna go around and so is Atkins in front of the whole field that's gonna be a big jam up as the front five or six get away there and uh, look we're three and four wide all the way back through the field Hewitt gets away mid fifth uh, mid teens right now looks like and we've got a we've got contact in the back couple cars going around back there looks like uh, Scott Wollen and such, but Hewitt's going to continue on with a little bit of damage as taking a look at Scott Wollen here. Uh, just got jammed up. That's contact with Duncan Cobb, and they're both going to go around with help from Greg Woodard, and they're going to slide out of the way as the field goes past, and they're going to lose all those positions that they had gained. Uh, we had a couple incidents further back. Looking here at Ryan Matthews, and he's going to make contact with Joe Craig. Alex Phillips goes around, and that's going to be a hard hit for Joe Craig. Craig would be the only car to drop out in this first lap from this incident. That was a lot of damage to the front of that 26 car, and ultimately that would put him out of the race. As Hewitt, I don't think he's out of the woods just yet, as Sapphire Anderson gets into him, and Hewitt's going to spin Anderson, who almost goes over there. Hewitt, oh boy, pole sitter is not having a good start to this race. As looks like Clay Gibson runs a bit wide. Three wide there between Atkins, Gibson, and Anderson. And uh, just made contact with Gibson, and Hewitt happened to be there, and there goes Anderson right around, and she's going to lose all that ground that she had uh, made up early on in the going. And uh, taking a look here at Israel Bruce, who has taken the lead uh, at the start of lap number two. He's going to go through the chicane. Oh! He's going to go off. Israel Bruce just slid off the track on his own accord. What was he doing? That was uh, that was an unforced error by Israel Bruce, who had been bad fast all weekend, but uh, head slid off there a couple times in practice, and that means Ike Durbin's going to take the lead, but Cameron Taylor's going to power around him now on the inside, coming down the stretch, and Cameron Taylor's now going to take the lead, as here's Clay Gibson, who uh, is running up in the teens right now with uh, Louis Ballard right behind him. Ballard gives him a bump, and he's going to power ahead just a little bit getting around Tora Gross there who makes contact with uh, that's Brian Gallagher and he's going to go around so a bit of damage there on the Clay Gibson car and just behind this you see there Greg Woodard making contact with a couple other cars but uh, we're going to focus on that here in a second and that's going to center around Dan Foray, Preston Bell Woodard goes into the wall, Jerry Myatt's going to go off in turn number two and get stuck in the sand trap there, he'll Looks like he's going to get that car fired again and keep going. A lot of incidents in these first couple laps. This, uh, These guys are really pushing it, trying to make up all the positions that they can, because once 
Oh, there goes around uh, Josh Marshall. He made contact with Mark Burt there. And James Hewitt looked like he was involved in once again another incident, but this time I think he just ran a bit wide. But Josh Marshall's going to keep going after losing a lot of positions. Cale Bernhardt Jr. runs into the back of him there. As Cameron Taylor is in the lead under threat from Ike Durbin. Durbin is right on his bumper trying to get the lead. He's going to try and look wide, and Cameron Taylor blocks. They're both going to go wide. Sergei Yakovsky there in the 65 going to try and make a move to make it three wide, but uh, doesn't quite have the speed or the room to do so, and Cameron Taylor is going to survive once again. As it uh, looks like Durbin uh, messed up that turn there, he's going to fall back a bit into the clutches of the 65 car. Sergei Yakovsky has moved up to second place back there, but Cameron Taylor continues to gap the field as uh, Ike Durbin struggles a bit. He's uh, looks like he's about to lose third to uh, Ramsey Cochner there, but Sergei Yakovsky, this was a last minute change. Uh, Stefan's racing, I think, is getting a bit desperate to make sure that they don't fall into the relegation. And uh, this was originally going to be Donnie Olson. In fact, he actually ran first practice with this team. Uh, but Sergei Yakovsky, uh, this has been his favorite track in the States as he loses that uh, second position to Ramsey Cochner. He won here in 2009 and has been uh, running this race on and off for the past few years, doing an excellent job here today with the struggling Stefan's racing team up in the top five right now. Tom Delgado and Ian Elias doing battle for 11th place, and they're both going to go sliding off in turn number one. Uh, they're both going to keep that going, but look at all this ground that they're losing. That's uh, heartbreak, especially for Tom Delgado, who is looking to keep his top 10 streak. He's uh, got the most top 10s in the series. Here's Salvatore Torregrossa. Uh, who is now up into 11th place at the end of lap three. He ran uh, the PCC Trucks race and finished in, I believe, sixth place in that race. So he's doing a great job this weekend, up in 11th place, almost in the top 10. And he abandoned the PCC Europe Series to come over and try and get a full-time ride for next season here in the States. As we've got two Russians going side-by-side, -side, Lazareva and Yakovsky. This is a battle for, I believe, fifth position. Oh, that's some contact. That was for fourth. And Lazareva's going to go off, but she'll get that car righted as Yakovsky survives the challenge, uh, perhaps not in the way that he was hoping. Akio Gifu and your, uh, last week's winner, Frank Azzaretto, make contact, and Gifu's going to go off on lap number 4 of 48. So we're still not done sliding off in turn 1. And uh, that's a very tight sequence of turns there. As here's Gareth Hunt, who... Uh, was who started in last position he had a penalty from uh cape cod that he served here but he has gone from last to 20th in four laps uh hunt is showing a lot of speed in this double zero car and i wouldn't be surprised if he worked his way up into the top 10 by the end of it welcome back lenny jacobs to the series after uh being involved in an accident in the round of california that had him missing 12 races uh now that he's back in the car he hasn't uh missed a beat he's in 16th place running right behind barbara burt there and uh, Lenny Jacobs is going to finish out the season in this car. Not sure what his plans are. Oh, we've got a couple cars in off in the back there. I'm going to take a look and see what happened. Is Daniel Sharp and Tom Delgado here. Oh, it looks like uh, Sharp and Delgado made contact. And Sharp is continuing to block Tom Delgado off the track. What is he doing? Oh, Delgado is not having any of that. And he's going to turn Sharp into the wall and go around himself. So, uh... I guess the first rule of uh, wrecking someone is not to wreck yourself, and unfortunately Tom Delgado didn't follow that rule, but what was Daniel Sharp doing? He was blocking Tom Delgado for... That That was a, a bit unnecessary, as we're going to go on board here and see what happened. Oh, that was some contact between Worthington and Sharp. Uh, Sharp was trying to block Worthington there, it looked like, and uh, Delgado trying to make the move, and... Sharp, I guess, just didn't get the memo that he was on the outside there, but he just continues to block him through through the sand trap. They get back on track, and he's just not letting him back on uh, the 169 car, so that was a bit ridiculous from Daniel Sharp. As Delgado's going to continue on without a lot of damage, but unfortunately uh, he's going to lose quite a few positions. As here's your winner from Grand Detour, Frank Azzaretta running in 21st place, going three wide into uh, the first couple turns, and that's not going to work in a million years. He goes off with uh, Josh Marshall there. Uh, no damage, but he's going to lose quite a few positions in the process of getting back on track. 
So a tough break for Frank Azzaretto and his day is not off to a great start. As Cameron Taylor has started to open up the lead just a little bit over Ramsey Cockiner there. Cameron Taylor, this is his fourth race and uh, so far in the past three races that he's run, he's finished in the top 10 uh, every race. So Cameron Taylor not missing a beat comes back and is setting the series on fire as James Hewitt just can't seem to get out of people's way gets into it with Brian Gallagher there and Israel Bruce and he's going to get even more damage oh close call for Lenny Jacobs there as uh, Hewitt now has a torn up rear end on that 155 car as if things couldn't get any worse as we've got four wide going through the garbage dump with uh, Jacobs, Mark Burt, Clay Gibson and Gareth Hunt and Hunt's going to get spun around there same lap as that incident with Hewitt and uh, everyone's going to miss Hunt, and he's going to lose a few positions, which uh, means that his efforts to claw his way back up into the top 10 uh, are going to take a little more time. As Barbara Burt, you might notice that this car is missing sponsorship. Uh, this car was sponsored by uh, Hellman's and Best Foods earlier in the season. But after Grand Detour, uh, when Ben Atkins was taken out by this car flipping down the track, he declared that mayonnaise was extinct. And uh, since that, we haven't been able to find any trace of mayonnaise in the world. Uh, so Hellman's uh, no longer exists. As uh, Ike Durbin doing battle with Sergei Yakovsky here. This is uh, for third position. As Durbin trying to do everything that he can to stay in front of Ben Atkins, who is his main points rival right now. And Atkins had his issues earlier in the race, but he's back there in looks like seventh place. So Atkins has recovered nicely from that spin on the first lap, uh, running right behind Louis Billard, and that's uh, Gaspar de Souza up there, who's got a little bit of hood damage uh, from a couple incidents uh, earlier in the races. Billard's going to go wide, and looks like de Souza's going to take that position. As John Jefferson uh, has is blocking. Oh, we've got a slow Scott Wall in there, and he tries to make a move around, but gets turned there by Akio Gifu, and that's going to be the end of the day. For John Jefferson, who was running pretty decently by his standards. He was uh, in the top 30 when that happened. So uh, things are only going to get worse for Stefan's racing here. As looks like uh, seeing what happened to Scott Wollen. Oh, he just got wrecked by uh, Preston Bell. This was earlier in that lap. Uh, that's why Scott Wollen was so slow, because he had all that hood damage. And Preston Bell's going to have a lot of hood damage to his car as well as Louis Ballard is now the fastest car on track. Uh, he is catching, he got around uh, Ben Atkins there. Atkins had passed him earlier in the lap and he's gonna make a move around Gaspar de Souza here on the outside. Let's see if that works for him. He does have the fastest car on track right now, but it looks like Gaspar de Souza has the preferred line. Oh, no, he's gonna make that stick. And Louis Ballard is gonna move up into the top five with that move as Ramsey Cockiner and second place this is his best run of the year so far uh, Ramsey Cockiner has uh, 10 top 10s this season so far and uh, that's one of the highest totals in the season but he's only in about 15th in points because his oval efforts have been so lackluster uh, that all the effort that he's put into the road courses has been nullified by those poor results on the ovals as Clay Gibson's day goes from bad to worse right there as he gets dumped by Ian Elias. I believe he's already a lap down at this point, Clay Gibson is, because he had to make an unscheduled pit stop, and his day's just going to get worse from there. As here is Tom Wilson doing a great job. He is up in the top 10 right now. He's in 8th place. Good effort by the uh, son of Trans Am legend and former PCC Cup Series competitor Don Wilson. Uh, who was a road course ringer back in the 90s. He's showing his road course pedigree here today up in the top 10. Andy Lambert up in 11th place, having a pretty strong run, coming to put Daniel Sharp a lap down as uh, Sharp's been in and out of the pits. And Sharp doesn't give him a lot of room. He hits the curb, and that just sends him into Daniel Sharp. And Andy Lambert's going to lose a few positions here. And what was shaping up to be a, a very promising run for the 34 team, uh, he's been clicking off a few impressive runs so far this year. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, Cameron Taylor has already put a three and a half second gap over Ramsey Cockner by lap 10, as he continues to drive away from the rest of the field. Louis Ballard, who has been bad fast the last few laps, making a move on Sergei Yakovsky for fourth place, as Yakovsky runs a bit wide there. 
Manticore Engineering has won the last two races at this track, uh, 2011 with Louis Ballard, 2012 with Clara Kendall, and Ballard is trying to make it uh, three in a row for Manticore Engineering, though Ike Durbin is in, ahead of him still on track. Uh, Sergey Yakovsky still doing a great job in that uh, outdated Tenere. That chassis hasn't been updated in about three years, as Ike Durbin, next lap, speaking of him, is going to make a move on Ramsey Cockner for second place. Cockner runs a bit wide, and Durbin cuts low. Still side by side going into the S's, but Durbin's going to take the advantage on the inside there. And Durbin to second place, who now sets his sights on Cameron Taylor, who is over four seconds ahead. Cameron Taylor, speaking of him, getting ready to put James Hewitt a lap down, your pole sitter. And, oh, that's a bit of contact between him and Taylor as uh, lap 13 of 48, and Hewitt's already going a lap down. It's going to be a long day for that 155 car as uh, Sergei Yakovsky is going to slide a bit wide there. Ben Atkins takes a move on the inside, and he's going to trap uh, Gaspar D'Souza right behind him, pinning him there behind the slower car of Yakovsky, and Atkins is going to get two for one as he moves up into the top five and inches ever so closer to Ike Durbin, uh, trying to cut into his points lead. Speaking of Ike Durbin, he's under attack from Louis Ballard, who is once again, uh, I mentioned this couple times before he is the fastest car on track right now faster than the leader and Ike Durbin's gonna let him have the position so Louis Ballard moves up to third place and later that lap is gonna make a move on the inside of uh, Ramsey Cockiner same position that uh, same place on track that Ike Durbin made that move and now it's just a few lapped cars between Louis Ballard and Cameron Taylor Ballard last time by ran the fastest lap of the race by seven tenths of a second. It was a 132.5, uh, so that is bad fast. As you can see there, Cameron Taylor's in the distance. It's a seven second gap uh, up to Cameron Taylor as Israel Bruce has been way off the pace. He pulls over and lets Ben Worthington go, but he's gonna clip the curb and go off with Worthington as uh, Israel Bruce continues to struggle with navigating this course. Uh, he's got a fast car, but uh, I, I have got my doubts about Israel Bruce. Uh, as here's uh, Cale Bernfart Jr. who's kept his nose out of trouble all race. He's doing a pretty decent job. He's up in 24th place right now. He runs a bit wide and that's Akio Gifu turning him into the wall. Uh, so much for that good run, as that's quite a bit of damage to the 51 car. Uh, Burnfart Jr. is losing this ride at the end of the year in favor of uh, PCC Lights Hot Shoe Sam Burkhart. We're not sure what his plans are for next season. Uh, as Sergei Yakovsky still having a good run. He's up in seventh place. And uh, Stefan's Racing, he is the best running Stefan's Racing car and the only one not to have any issues today. As uh, John Jefferson's already out of it. And Preston Bell is missing his hood, so... Uh, Stefan's Racing putting all their uh, all their hopes and dreams on the 65 car to try and claw them uh, closer to the uh, closer to staying in the series uh, next year. As Gaspar de Souza trying to make a move on uh, the outside of James Hewitt here. Oh, Hewitt's going to get into him there and spin him off. As oh, James Hewitt. Oh man, this is uh, this is a gonna be a long day for that 155 car and I wouldn't be surprised if I mean he's run into so many cars out there I'm not gonna be surprised if uh, he gets a penalty at some point during this race now uh, Gareth Hunt uh, mentioned earlier in the race at the end of lap four that he had worked his way up to 20th place he stalled out a little bit uh, that spin uh, slowed him down but he is already still up to 14th place he got around a few more cars so Hunt continues his march up towards the top 10, uh, despite running into a couple issues here and there. Uh, this is one of the faster cars on track, as uh, Accelerator Motorsports' best running driver is Kurt Pliskin. He's up in 23rd place doing battle with uh, Kelly Blackwater there, but they're going to go three wide, and Blackwater and Pliskin are going to go hard into the wall, and both are going to go out. And uh, Accelerator Motorsports is down their highest running driver and that's really gonna hurt their chances to get back up into the uh, series for next season as you see Pliskin pulling into the pits there done for the day Ike Durbin is uh, having a pretty good run for himself uh, 
This is the battle for fourth place. As here comes Ben Atkins. Atkins uh, making a big charge towards Ike Durbin. He got stuck behind uh, Brian Gallagher there. And now this is championship implications as if Ben Atkins can get around Ike Durbin here. Uh, that's going to be cutting into Durbin's uh, points lead, which is uh, pretty large right now. I believe it's 48 points. He was the only driver not to have issues at Grand Detour uh, up in the top 10 in points. And Atkins gets around him there and is set to gain more points. As you can see, uh, looking at Cameron Taylor here, you can see Louis Ballard in the back of that shot. He is closing the gap ever so slightly, but it's stabilized at about five seconds right now as... Uh, Cameron Taylor works his way around uh, Daniel Sharp as uh, Salvatore Torregrossa in the 20 car is in 10th place. He's uh, kind of stabilized around the low top 10. He hasn't really gained any positions, but he's lost one or two positions to faster cars. Ian Elias behind him has been gaining on him the past few laps, but this is a good first run in this Matthews car who... Uh, the Matthews team hasn't exactly been the fastest car, but they've been doing a pretty good job as Brian Gallagher has been off the pace. He has uh, sustained some damage. Oh, that's some contact with Gaspar D'Souza. D'Souza leans into him, and he's going to take him hard into the wall. That's going to be the end of the day for Brian Gallagher as D'Souza is going to get stuck in the sand trap from the top 10. He was in sixth place when that happened. Taking a look here to see what happened. and Oh, Looks like his, uh, the 49th spotter had cleared him left, but uh, D'Souza just had such a run that he had moved over and cut off his nose, and uh, D'Souza's going to fall a lap or two down here. Lap 21 of 48, and Cameron Taylor's going to commit to the pit lane from the lead. Uh, these cars can do about 28 laps on a tank of fuel, so this is right on the edge of the one-stop strategy, and Taylor's going to be the first one to kick it off on pit road as... Uh, Looks like Louis Ballard's going to stay out. Ramsey Cockner's going to stay out. We've got Ike Durbin and Ben Atkins staying out as well. But Sergei Yakovsky's going to come in. And so are Alina Lazareva. And uh, Tom Wilson's going to stay out as well. Hometown hero Greg Woodard from Decatur is going to... Is still running, surprisingly. And that's going to put him out of the race. As Lenny Jacobs just dumps him. Uh, going up the S's. So Greg Woodard, the DNF leader, adds another one to his tally as his season continues to fall apart. Uh, halfway point now, and uh, Louis Ballard is still out on track. He is getting ready to put Ben Worthington a lap down, uh, but he leads by about 10 seconds over Ramsey Cockner as he slides a bit wide there, uh, but keeps it on track. That was a close call for uh, Louis Ballard, but he's going to keep it going as uh, we've got the battle for 28th here between Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer and Preston Bell, who's got a lot of damage on that car. Bell's going to try and make a move around Wheat Farmer. Wheat Farmer has none of that and puts him into the wall, and that might be a penalty forthcoming for that 70 team as accidents on pit road are no joke in this series. As uh, We've got uh, Salvatore Torregrossa coming into the pits. He chose the middle of uh, this pit window to come in on lap 24 as Ike Durbin just got around Ben Atkins once again, so he is gaining points on Atkins, his nearest points rival. Uh, coming into this race, I believe the points gap was something around 48 points, uh, a full race, so Durbin doing all that he can to try and lock up this championship, as uh, Louis Ballard is actually the worst running of the three Manticore cars in the championship, but he leads here today and is looking for a big points day as he puts... Uh, Preston Bell lap down. Uh, taking a look further back in the field, Ben Worthington hasn't come into the pits yet, but uh, he is in 13th place, and this is a fantastic run for the short track uh, star from New Jersey. He's not known for his road course prowess, but a good top 15 run here. This is uh, really out of the ordinary for Worthington. Uh, who was recently confirmed to be coming back to this team as Ramsey Cockner comes into the pits there. Uh, ben Atkins and Ike Durbin still side by side. These two are on top of each other. And uh, it's going to be a drag race down here into turn one to see who can get the advantage. Points rivals doing battle. Atkins on the inside. He makes contact. And Ike Durbin's going to go sliding off the track. I just, I think that was a racing incident, but Atkins just secured 
a spot over Ike Durbin here, as uh, going on board with Durbin to see what happened from his end. And uh, just side by side with Atkins. Atkins hits the rumble strip and just loses traction. Durbin just nicks the wall there and he's gonna keep it rolling and lose a couple positions in the process. Uh, going on board with Ramsey Cockener who came, who is uh, coming out of the pits there. That car right there that just went off and kicked up dirt, that is Cameron Taylor. So he's not too far behind the 39 car. He came out of the pits uh, perfectly as uh, Louis Ballard's gonna come into the pits at the end of lap 26. And uh, we'll see how he cycles out here uh, once he makes his pit stop. Uh, ben Atkins is gonna come in as well and a little bit behind Atkins few seconds is Ike Durbin. Tom Delgado coming in there as well. I think he's got some problems on that three car. Uh, Delgado reporting some engine issues on that three car. Uh, he may have dropped a cylinder as Louis Ballard coming out of the pits. We're going to see where he cycles out. Getting a good run there. And there's Cameron Taylor. So he's right behind Taylor. Taylor swinging a bit wide there. Uh, we've got a battle on our hands as it looks like he's only a couple seconds back right now. Uh, Ballard is from that 39 car. He had a good pit stop. And uh, Tom Wilson had a good pit stop. He's up in fourth place, doing an excellent job in this 31 car. He's hanging up there with the best of them. And uh, this is, he's in front of Ben Atkins. He, he's having an awesome day as uh, Tom Wilson looking for his best road course finish of his career. He's got his teammate uh, right in front of him who might play interference with Ben Atkins. But you can see here the gap is 1.8 seconds from Cameron Taylor to uh, Louis Ballard. But Ballard hasn't really been able to close the gap in the past couple laps. As Barbara Burt, we haven't talked about her much, but she's running up in uh, 11th place. Quietly worked her way forward and uh, she's kept her nose clean. And there goes the motor. Barbara Burt's good day comes to an end. Uh just outside the garbage dump. She's going to pull that car to the outside of the track. Oh, she's... What are you doing? Oh, no. Here comes... Lambert's going to get involved. Lambert's going to go out of the race, and that's big damage to both the 34 and the 366. I don't know what uh, Bert was thinking. She was easing her way into the racing line, and you see there, just had nowhere to go. Uh, the 34 did. Uh, Preston Bell was on the inside of him, and that, that's just a tough break for both of them. As Mark Burt, you saw uh, Barbara Burt was right behind him, is up in uh, 10th place. So he's got a bit of damage on that 566 car, but he's doing a good job uh, keeping himself out of trouble. That's Lenny Jacobs and Josh Marshall right behind him. Those are both for position as they've been hunting him down the past few laps and have the speed to get around him. Uh, Sergei Yakovsky didn't have a great pit stop. He's... Uh, in 12th place right now so he had a bit of damage on that uh, six, uh, 65 car and uh, had to get that repaired in the pits and he lost a bit of ground but still a good effort for the 65 team even a top 15 would do them a lot of good Alina Lazareva the other Russian in the field is up in sixth place and she uh, she did go off the track early on but has been able to recover from that pretty well and uh, Lazareva keeping her nose clean since then and uh, looking at a good top 10 finish uh, for her efforts as she uh, tries to come up to lap Ben Worthington there in the six car. Ian Elias, the stealth bomber, has been flying under the radar for most of this race. He is, uh, last we saw him, he was running right behind Salvatore Torregrosa in the 20 car in ninth place. He has since gotten around him and is now up to eighth. And uh, by what we understand, uh, Elias will be back with Paloma Autosport next season. Uh, with the same sponsorship deal in place. So good for him uh, to stick around in the series. He has been one of the strongest competitors in the series the past few years. Josh Marshall, who by what we understand will also be back in uh, the 18 next season, uh, has recovered from his early spin and is up into 10th place. So Marshall looking for a rare top 10. He hasn't finished up in the top 10 much this year, uh, but he is up in the top 10 in points, having a very good year for himself. Uh, Duncan Cobb is the last car on the lead lap right now. He is in 16th place. And uh, he's kept his nose clean for most of the race. And uh, there's some indications uh, that he will be back next year uh, with this team uh, in whatever iteration it 
uh, takes, uh, Clayson Enterprises, is up for sale, and we're expecting uh, that the there were several bids for the team, and we're expecting that that bid winner will be announced uh, after the Charlotte race. So excited to see how that turns out. As uh, Sergei Yakovsky running in 12th place is coming up to lap Kale Bernfart Jr. Bernfart Jr. leaning on that quarter panel, and he is going to spin Yakovsky in front of Mark Burt, who takes a bunch of damage on that hood. And uh, looks like Sergei Yakovsky is going to lose a few positions and fall a lap down in the process. Tough break for that 65 team, and they were in contention for a top 15. And that's going to go out the window with that right there, as Mark Burt's got a lot of damage on that 566 car. Uh, that's, oh, contact between Cameron Taylor and Duncan Cobb. Cobb nearly took uh, Taylor off the course there, but Taylor and Cobb, cooler heads prevailed there as uh, they both decide to back out of that situation. Three wide with Mark Burt and Duncan Cobb as Cameron Taylor's gonna weasel his way through that through the middle and uh, put both of them a lap down. Scary incident there as uh, Ryan Matthews has, uh, he's quietly stayed in this race. He doesn't have a lot of damage on that car and he's worked his way from, real, from quite low on the grid up to 20th place and uh, he has just survived this race. Uh, he is the worst running of the three cars on his team, uh, but he has been consistent all race and has kept his nose clean up in the top 20. Speaking of Matthews Motorsports team, Gareth Hunt has just gone a lap down. He is in 12th place. So uh, there's a bit of damage on that car. He's been in the wall, it looks like. And uh, Hunt doing all that he can to try and stay up at the front of the field. Uh, this looks to be his best showing of the year so far, and this is his last scheduled race in that double zero car. As with 10 laps to go, it's a four and a half second gap for Cameron Taylor over uh, Louis Ballard in the eight car. As, oh, looks like Hunt's gonna slide off there. That's an unforced error on the double zero. But Cameron Taylor, uh, fourth race back in this car, and it looks like he might have a win on his hands if he can keep his nose clean as Ramsey Cockner, best run of the year for him so far. That's three wide, and they're going to make that work. As uh, Israel Bruce, I wouldn't trust him around uh, in a three wide situation, but Ramsey Cockner, this team will be back next year. Um, sounds like he's going to try and retain the same driver lineup uh, with Sharp and Myatt, unless they find better rides elsewhere. Uh, but this team, uh, I would say that this is... For a year one team this is a very successful year for nice cock racing as josh marshall trying to get around uh, alex phillips and uh, ryan matthews oh that's some contact and he's going to go hard into the wall josh marshall from 10th place hard into the wall that's a lot of damage on that front end but he's going to keep that car out on track and uh limp at home should be able to still salvage a pretty decent finish uh despite that the hood doesn't look too crumpled and uh, yeah, he's not coming into the pits. So Josh Marshall is going to stay out on track and just try and drag that thing home. Looks like Lenny Jacobs is up in 11th place. Uh, trying to look for a top 10 here. Actually, no, he got around Josh Marshall. So he is up in the top 10. And Ryan Matthews is blocking him for some reason. He's trying to get around him. He tries to go wide. Matthews goes wide, tries to go to the inside. And uh, we saw that coming. Matthews gets dumped into the wall by Lenny Jacobs, who has none of his blocking. That's going to be a lot of damage to that 52 as well. Uh, there goes the leader, getting ready to put Josh Marshall a lap down and going on board with Lenny Jacobs. You can see, yeah, he tries to move there to the outside and to the inside, and just Matthews was blocking him for really no good reason. Uh, going to be interesting to see what Matthews has to say about why he was blocking after race as uh, Jacobs has a promising run go down the drain as Cale Bernfart Jr. makes contact with uh, Alina Lazareva and goes hard into the wall and he is going to be done for the day. That was fairly unnecessary as Wilson has to make evasive maneuvers there to get around him. Scott Wallen uh, has been fairly slow all day. He's got a lot of damage on that front end and has been off the pace. Ben Worthington trying to give him a push but I think uh, he's getting pressured by Toro Grossa, and uh, that's just a bad bump. He's going to go into the wall, and that's going to be the end of the day for Scott Wallen, who uh, 
was off the pace. He was running at about 25th, so it wasn't going to be a great points day for the 16 car. He's going to drive that car away, and James Hewitt has nowhere to go and runs into the back of the 16 car, and that's going to take him out of the race. Uh, not sure why he didn't go uh, to the right, but going on board with Hewitt. It looks like he tried to cut to the left, but he didn't expect the 16 car to still be there, and that's going to put an end to a miserable day for the 155 car. Is uh, Just a few laps to go here. Uh, lap 46, and uh, Cameron Taylor's got a good lead. Oh, that's some contact with Mark Burton. He's going to go around. Cameron Taylor goes through the grass. He's going to lose a lot of time, but Cameron Taylor keeps his foot in it. That car doesn't lose a lot of momentum but he's going to lose quite a bit of ground to Louis Ballard as Ballard now is on the same straightaway and Taylor's a bit slow to get away. Going to see how close the gap is here. That was a near disaster for Cameron Taylor. It still might be because Louis Ballard is now closing the gap on Cameron Taylor and you can see how much closer he's getting here. The gap is now down to under 10 car lengths with just two and a half laps remaining as looks like Cameron Taylor is struggling to get around Ben Worthington there. Now coming onto the front straightaway, it looks like uh, the gap is 1.2 seconds with just two laps to go. But uh, Louis Ballard does have that lapped car of Worthington between himself and Taylor. We're going to see what happens with Worthington here and uh, see if he gets out of the way. Taylor looks like he's going to be able to navigate that first S well. Worthington pulls wide and looks like Ballard is going to get a great run coming down this long straightaway. And going through the garbage dump with two to go. Cameron Taylor, that gap is being cut down just a little bit more as uh, coming to take the white flag now. The gap is under one second. Cameron Taylor hanging on for dear life as Louis Ballard is pulling within drafting distance of the 39 car. If he gets that draft, then he might be able to catch the 39 by the end of this lap and then, uh, well, catching him is one thing, but passing him is going to be a whole nother as looks like we're going to have some lap traffic in the way. It's the other Outback car, Preston Bell. Cameron Taylor trying to swing wide around, and that's going to open the door for Louis Ballard. Ballard's closing the gap. But it looks like Cameron Taylor has the speed, and he's going to try and get her. There, he gets around uh, Preston Bell with ease. On the outside, Ballard pulls up to the back bumper, uh, but there's some confusion on t as to which line Preston Bell's going to take, and I think that might have sealed the deal for Cameron Taylor. Coming through the last couple turns, Taylor's got a big enough gap that I don't think it's going to be an issue. And Cameron Taylor onto the front stretch. Louis Ballard six tenths back, but that's not going to matter because Cameron Taylor is going to take his first win of the season in his fourth start in the Griffith Motorsports 39. Taking a look at the results, Ben Atkins finished in third and cuts Ike Durbin's points lead by four as Durbin finished in seventh. Ramsey Cockner showed his best race pace all season and finished in fourth place. Alina Lazareva makes it a double top five for Griffith Motorsports in fifth. And Tom Wilson continues his excellent streak of finishes by bringing his 31 car home in sixth place. Ian Elias kept his nose clean and uh, stayed under the radar, brought home an eighth. Great run for him. And a double top ten for Matthews Motorsports team. See Salvatore Torregrossa finish as the last car in the lead lap in 9th, and Gareth Hunt first car one lap down in 10th. With the sale of Clayson Enterprises being imminent, Duncan Cobb brings the 79 car home in 11th place. Great run for him. And all three of the Australian motorsports cars finish up in the top 15, with Sapphire Anderson leading the way for them in 12th. Akio Gifu, despite spinning off early in the going, finishes in 13th. Great run for him. Sergei Yakovsky was running up in the top 5 for most of the race, but... A lack of pace dropped him down out of the top 10, and then a spin with Cale Bernfart Jr. drops him down to 16th. Ben Worthington, great showing for him in 17th, not known for his road course racing prowess. Frank Azzaretto sneaks up into the top 20 with another strong showing. Mark Burt, P19, and Tom Delgado, with all of his engine issues, drops down to 20th place, but still brings it home in the top 20. Taking a look at the driver's points, Ike Durbin leads over Ben Atkins by 44 and over James Hewitt by 99, meaning this has turned into a two-horse race for the championship with three races to go. Tom Delgado sits five points behind Hewitt in fourth place, and two points behind Delgado is Ballard, which means all three Manicore cars are up in the top five in points. Brian Gallagher and 
Gaspar D'Souza both had miserable days today and sit 6th and 7th in points, with Sapphire Anderson, the leading rookie in 8th, just 8 points behind Gaspar D'Souza. Tom Wilson up in the top 10 having a great end to his season, and Ian Elias sits 10th in the standings, just 4 points behind Tom Wilson. There's a tie for 11th between Mark Burton and Josh Marshall, who both sit on 500 points. Ramsey Cockner up to 13th in the standings, having a good close to his season. Andy Lambert, P14, has hung around that uh, spot all season. Duncan Cobb takes over the best Clayson Enterprises car over Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, who is 17th. Alina Lazareva up in 16th place, being the worst of the Griffith Motorsports cars in team points. Uh, and Barbara Burt sits 18th despite losing her sponsor, Alex Phillips, P19. And welcome Frank Azzaretto back up into the top 20 as he sits in that position with 419 points. Finally, taking a look at the team standings as a result of their finishes today, Manticore Engineering has mathematically locked themselves into next season in the PCC Cup Series, becoming the first team to do so. All teams below 9th place have been mathematically eliminated from winning the team championship but they still have another battle to survive into next season and not be relegated. Accelerator Motorsports and Stefan's Racing are within five points of each other, but over 110 points behind Lucas Motorsports, the first team in safety in 12th place.